In this lecture, I wanna walk you through a live account of a client of ours and show you how I would use this search terms report to find some profitable negative keyword ideas. So I'm looking at a search terms report of one specific campaign. I'm not looking at uh, search terms for the entire account and that's how you would typically do it. You wanna keep yourself organized while you're working on campaign by campaign because each campaign signifies something different for your business. It's usually a different product, a different service, a different level of profitability, different margin products. However you're building out your campaigns, maybe there's different match types, whatever it is, I typically recommend working on search terms, working on negative keywords, campaign by campaign. If you don't have enough time to optimize every single campaign, in one session, let's say, then you should be going campaign by campaign in order of importance. And an order, an order of importance typically means the campaigns that are spending the most money. That's the campaigns that you should try optimizing first. So here we are in a campaign that has um, lots of different clicks, you know, 5,500 search terms. So where do I begin? The first level is to not pay attention to search terms that have too few clicks. If a search term has under 30 clicks, it's typically too few clicks to even assess whether or not this search term is gonna ultimately be very valuable for you. It's just not enough data. For example, if that search term that has 30 clicks today or tomorrow ends up getting five conversions, then that's a really good keyword. And if you would have added that as a negative keyword, then you would have been cutting out a really profitable keyword. In accounts that are getting a good amount of data, and there's no such, there's no specific rule for what a good amount of data is. I typically recommend only looking at search terms that have at least 100 clicks. And I know that might sound a, like a lot to you guys, especially if your budgets are very small and you're only spending a few dollars a day or 30, 40 dollars a day and you have a bunch of keywords. But that's why I've always been stressing you need to have fewer keywords if you have a smaller budget. So if you're spending anywhere between 10 and $50 a day, I don't recommend having more than 10 keywords because then you'll get to the point where your search terms have 100 clicks much, much faster, and then you could start getting that account much better. That's one of the biggest mistakes. There, there's two huge mistakes beginners make when it comes to Google Ads. One of them is not giving things enough time. You know, you spend $50 a day for four days, you don't, you're not profitable, and you shut things down. That's mistake number one. You need to give things time. Mistake number two is that advertisers allow their data to be spread too thin across their budget. So they have hundreds and hundreds of keywords, hundreds and hundreds of search terms, and it takes too long to get enough data to know whether or not something's good or not. Because of course, nine times out of 10, when you first create your campaigns, you're not gonna be making the best possible campaigns. The best possible campaigns are gonna come through optimizations over time. And good optimizations could only be made when there's significant statistically relevant data to make those decisions off of. So the first thing I'm gonna do here in this live account is create a filter. So I'm gonna go into filter and I wanna create a filter that for searches that have at least 100 clicks. That's a really easy filter to do. I'm gonna go under performance, I'm gonna find clicks, and I'm gonna be greater than 100 or greater than 99, it doesn't really matter. And if you have a smaller account, go ahead and do 80 or 70, but, but I would really wouldn't, I really would, as a rule, never knock out a search term if it has less than 30 clicks, unless of course you know it's a bad search term. If you're, if, you know, going back to our previous lecture, if you're popping and you don't sell salon chairs and you don't sell dinosaur chairs, then of course, if it's one or click or two clicks or three clicks, of course knock it out. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about search terms that look good on the surface. You're not sure whether or not you think it should convert and that's what we're really trying to find, opportunities to knock out potentially good search terms that might make sense that you might have thought were a good click um, but you wanna remove them because they're just not profitable in your account. For example, if we're popping, we sell desk chairs, right? But let's say we find that, that just the search desk chairs without any other modifying terms is too broad, right? We, we definitely anticipated going in, we wanted to test, will the search desk chairs be profitable? And we find after 100 clicks that desk chairs never converts because it's just too broad. You know, we find that people convert better when it's the search terms are like rolling desk chairs or leather desk chairs or executive desk chairs or whatever that may be, but just desk chairs by itself. Then after 100 clicks, we have enough data to know that it's not converting, we'll knock it out. I would also just add real quick, I know that we're sort of getting away from the main topic here, but you wouldn't necessarily knock out a search term if it has zero conversions after 100 clicks. You might also wanna try reducing the bid because oftentimes you'll have search terms that have 100 clicks and two conversions and it's not profitable yet. So you see that the search term could convert, but it would be worth your while to not just remove it from the account, but to try to lower the bid or try to write a better ad, try to increase its click-through rate, try to do something that qualifies that click. 
Removing a keyword completely, especially a keyword that has a few conversions, is a last resort, okay? Whether it has a low quality score, it's not profitable, whatever it is, there are usually different levers and buttons that you could pull and push before having to exclude a keyword from your account completely. So let's go back, let's go back into our computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a filter for search terms that have at least 100 clicks. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go ahead here and type in 100 as my value. And if you notice that the background just shifted a little bit, it's because I had to find a different account just for the, for the sake of protecting the identity of the client and not giving away any actual data while trying to show as much real things in this, in this course as possible as um, a value to you, the students. So I'm gonna click apply. And now we're looking at a search terms report of only search terms that have at least 100 clicks. So that's a start. Now there's a few different things to do for our next filter layer because we're still, we still might be looking at too many search terms and we might be looking at a lot of search terms that are, that are profitable and that are good and we don't wanna to have to sort through because we don't wanna add them as negatives, right? So we can look at a couple different metrics. The best metric to look at is your return because most of you and really all of you should be looking at every single individual keyword and search term in the context of profit. You should know going in, like we've spoken about, what your return on ad spend has to be to remain profitable. If you're not tracking value of a conversion in the account, which is fine, you could also track value based on knowing what your cost per conversion needs to be to remain profitable, all right? So this is especially true for lead gen businesses. If you're an e-commerce business, there's literally no excuse to not have conversion value being imported back into the account because e-commerce businesses are all about how much does it cost for me to produce ship manufacturer service the goods that I'm selling and how much money did I make through advertising and what did my advertising cost? And then you could look at conversion value and if you remember what your return on ad spend column is, um, if you guys remember it's uh, conversion value, which is revenue, divided by cost, okay? That's a column in AdWords. Now, that's that's much more typical for e-commerce. A lot of lead gen businesses and your primary conversion action is a form submission or a phone call, you guys just know based on your 30% close rate or your 20% close rate and what your average profit per client or customer is. If you're a local company, um, you definitely should have those numbers. And again, you could reference back to my AdWords formula, my Google Ads formula calculator that I gave to you guys in the second lecture of the course to figure out what your true cost per conversion, your benchmark cost per conversion in Google Ads has to be. So for this client, for example, say we know that in order to be profitable, we have to make sure that our conversions are costing no more than $80. Our form submissions are costing us $80 a piece. So I don't need to think about adding search terms as negative search terms if my search terms are producing form submissions at less than $80 a piece. So now we know what my next filter for such a, an account should be. I'm gonna go ahead and click add another filter right over here. I'm gonna to go to conversions. I'm gonna find cost per conversion. And I know for this account, a conversion is a form submission. And this might sound a little bit confusing because we didn't talk about conversion tracking yet and what conversion actions are. But just know for this account, for this example, a conversion is a successful form submission on the contact page or, or any contact form on the client's website. So I wanna find keywords that are bad, and so, um, rather I wanna find search terms that are bad. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add an additional filter on top of my clicks filter by going ahead and clicking add filter. I'm gonna find conversions, cost per conversions, amount is $80, greater than $80, my cost per conversion is greater than $80 and click apply. And now I've whittled down a much larger search terms report to a much more essential search terms report that will be actually helpful in me finding negative keywords that I would wanna add as negative keywords to this account. I have enough data in the search terms report that I'm looking at now. Every single search term here has at least, at least 100 clicks. So I know that if I'm getting, if it's really poor, if it's, if, if it's a really poor keyword, I'm going to want to add that as negative. And I'm only looking at search terms that are too expensive. I'm only looking at search terms that, that literally have not been profitable because I know, and this is not true numbers for this account, but I, let's say I would know that my form submissions must cost at least uh, my, my, my form submissions must, must, must cost at most $80. And I'm looking only at search terms that have resulted in form submissions above $80. So now I can do a couple things. I could sort by cost, which is what I would typically do, by clicking the cost column. I wanna see which of these are the most important, most egregious things to fix. All right, so I'm gonna sort first by cost. What's, which, which, what has been spending the most money? So first I see credit repair services. Well, this is what this client offers. This client offers credit repair services. It has a lot of volume. 
It spent a lot of money. It has a good amount of conversions and the cost per conversion is $110. It also has a healthy conversion rate of 12.5%. So what do I do? Do I add this as a negative? Well, I would say no. If this was a keyword, if this was a search term that was producing form submissions at $200, I would say it's just wait, it's just not going to work. I would much much sooner lower the bid on this search term to see if we can get it to profitability because it does look like it has potential. That's a really big thing to focus on. It does it have potential. Um, so I'm going to leave this alone for now. I'm going to continue to come down and take a look at, okay, so here's Equifax Dispute. Equifax is one of the credit bureaus. Equifax Dispute, I have 148 clicks, I spent $1,600, um, seven conversions, not a lot, and at a $218 cost per conversion, 4.73% conversion rate, really, really poor keyword. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this search term. I'm going to add it as a negative keyword at the campaign level. Equifax dispute, and I'm going to leave it as negative exact match with the brackets, which means that when anybody searches for Equifax dispute exactly, my ads won't show up. Now, I might also get away with adding this as a phrase match keyword because it's reasonable now to assume that any search term that includes Equifax dispute is not going to be the right type of click for us because Equifax Dispute is itself a concept that's indicating who the person is. That's a really important concept to remember. When determining how match types should be, negative keywords should be added, what match types they should have, does the keyword itself express something conclusive? Yes, I'm looking to figure out how to submit an Equifax Dispute. That's what the search term is telling me. So if I added just Equifax as a negative, this would probably be too aggressive, right? Because I might have um, search terms in my account where Equifax being included in them are actually profitable. I might, people might be searching for Equifax credit repair help, which might be a really profitable search term for us. So if I had Equifax as a negative broad match, then I'd be excluding that search term from triggering my ads. I don't want that to happen. But anytime I see Equifax dispute, that's probably a good idea to add as a negative keyword. So first I'm going to add it as the negative exact match, right? To have it show as excluded in the account, which is great. And then I'm going to go back to negative keywords or do it again. Um, this time I can go to negative keywords, add a new negative, put it onto a campaign level, select the campaign, and I can write in phrase match Equifax dispute. All right, so now once I have Equifax dispute, I'm going to click save. And now the phrase match version has also been added as negative keyword on top of the exact match version of that keyword. All right, so that's how I would start going through live accounts. You need to understand conversions. You need to understand your cost per conversion. You need to see conversion rate. You need to see return on ad spend, conversion value divided by cost. Those are the metrics. Remember guys, there's two very important concepts when it comes to finding um, negative keyword ideas. One is data, okay? That's very important. 100 clicks, that's my benchmark. Unless, which is like, you know, 1A, let's say, it's clearly bad. So going back to last lecture's example, if we sell office chairs and we don't sell salon chairs or we don't sell gaming chairs, then, you know, that would be a keyword we could add as a negative. In fact, that might have been a keyword we added as a negative right in the beginning before any data, even if there's just one click, right? You don't want to spend any money on gaming. You know it's not going to be good. But if you're looking for negative keywords that you thought could be good, you should look for at least 100 clicks. Definitely not less than 30, okay? Not less than 30 clicks before adding something as a negative. The second concept is, I'm going to write this in big block letters, conversions and ROAS. Now, in the example that we just looked at, we didn't have an ROAS column. We weren't looking at conversion value divided by cost. But I used ROAS, I used my cost per conversion as a proxy for ROAS because I know from my offline data that in order for us to be profitable, every click, every conversion cannot cost any more than $80, right? That was an example number. But since I knew that that $80 was my ROAS threshold, I knew that I wanted to filter out not only by 100 clicks, but I also wanted to filter out search terms that were generating those form submissions at over $80, all right? That's something which is important to look at. The third concept, which is not a, as fundamental, but make sure that you that anything you could do to make the keyword better, you try to do before, um, before knocking out the keyword. So don't be trigger happy. Don't just go ahead 
adding negative keywords just like it looks bad. Because if we go jump back into the computer, we go back to our, we go back to our search terms report, and we see credit repair services, $110. Just because it's not profitable right now, that doesn't mean that I would add it as a negative keyword. It's clearly a good search term for this client. We just need to figure out a way to make it more profitable. Maybe we're gonna to try to work on our quality score. Maybe we're gonna to try to get our quality score from a six to a nine, bring down the CPC. If we bring down the CPC, our cost per conversion comes down. If our cost per conversion comes down, then it might be a profitable search term. So we're gonna go ahead and do the hard work to make that account work, to make that search term work for us. But like we see Equifax dispute, we will find examples of search terms that just will not work. It's clear and it's no good. We knock it out, we add it as a negative keyword. And just remember these three concepts as you're working on your search terms report. Again, it's really, really important. Search terms report is, is, is gonna be the place where you find your best negative keyword ideas. Think about match types. Think about the level at the campaign you want to you want to be adding these 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 negative uh, keywords, and you'll see the more negative keywords you have, the better your account is going to perform. Unless your account is entirely exact match positive keywords, and if that's the case, your account is built incorrectly. You're not trying new things. You're not finding new ideas. Your account's going to be a mixture of broad match, broad match, modified phrase match, and in which case you need to have. Aim for at least a one-to-one -one volume of key positive keywords to negative keywords, but the ideal is for every one positive keyword in your, in your account, you have two to three negative keywords. And over the course of a few months of managing your account, you'll see how much more profitable and how much more dialed in your account is going to get. So that's an example of how you would approach as a professional practitioner looking at live data in a live account, trying to find good negative keyword opportunities. And if you follow these three guiding principles, you will always do a good job by your campaign, by your client, by your company, by maximizing their spend, while also not knocking out too many keywords, especially keywords that are slightly unprofitable, that with other work, like increasing quality score, lowering the bid, changing the bid strategy, rewriting ad copy, whatever it may be, all these different strategies, then you'll be um, developing and optimizing a campaign that's going to increase in profitability and ROI over time, even if it didn't start out that way. And in fact, most campaigns and most accounts don't start out profitable. They start out losing money. It's with good optimizations, good technique, that your optimizations produce a profitable account. I will see you guys very shortly in a couple seconds in the very next lecture.